So I said I would make uh, a video on my macOS Sonoma build. Uh, this is using the HP G4, I think it is. HP G4 mini PC. HP Elite Desk 800 G4. Uh, so if I go to images, so it's this little machine. Uh, and it's an i3, I think this machine is. Um, I originally did this build on a G6, uh, but the G6 for some reason didn't, certain things didn't work as well as they worked on this. So I ended up migrating most of that build, the EFI, to this machine and it's worked flawlessly, like everything works. Um, even uh, sidecar fully works, that's OBS. So this works with uh, the features unlocked text. Um, sound works, obviously I'm recording this on the uh, PC, if I just show you, uh, there's the mic, so OBS works, um, sound output works a lot of the drawbacks for uh, and the graphics acceleration works as well um, so if I go more info so yeah this is as far as this is concerned and actually this is almost identically spec'd to the um, to the Mac Mini so if you take the 2018 Mac Mini which also had uh, the UHD 630 graphics it's identical in every single way. Uh, the only difference with my Hackintosh is it can be upgraded, the RAM can be upgraded, um, there's a lot more functionality there. So I think that's why this build works so well on this machine because it is so similarly specced to um, to another, to the Mac Mini. And that's often a thing with Hackintosh is that if you put it on hardware that is completely alien to it you will have a hard time sometimes getting the texts to work um, and getting things to work what another build that I've done that I'll make a video about um, in the next couple of days is I've actually managed to get the Nvidia graphics um, drivers working on another build which is a an i3 for if I, I get myself confused an i5 fifth gen um, and it's the Lenovo machine I had some issues with my AMD graphics card, so I bought an RX uh, 580, thinking that you know RX 580 would work. Now it does, but it's the China, the one that I bought happened to be, and please watch out for this if you do uh, buy an RX 580. It happened to be the uh, Chinese version. Um, which I forget the the that the exact model number but the China version of the card the one that's meant to only be sold in China um, doesn't work with uh, with Mac OS at all the IDs are completely different I did try and flash the IDs uh, but my card isn't a flashable card so it wouldn't work um, I'll, I'll delve into that in the next video uh, but this video is mainly to just show you a little bit more about uh, this particular machine and what it does what it doesn't do which is nothing everything does work on it uh, this currently has a HDMI port in the back of it and a display port uh, which all work so if I load up um, OC auxiliary tools I'll load up as well um, I've got it here in the start bar I always get this confused with settings because it looks so similar um, now this sometimes does pop up even though it is using a new version it might be that text is out of date or something's out of date uh, but don't worry about that Pretty sure I think that's actually my disc. Let me just check. Yeah. So there's three drives in this machine. Four included the external. I think it's this one. 
Yeah, there it is. Now I know I know I've, I've read quite a few comments about um, that's because that's because I've mounted it like I mounted a different drive first. Let me unmount and then re uh, can't click today. All right, unmount and then mount. Definitely there. Um, I'll copy it to the desktop and we'll just look at it like that. I think OC Auxiliary Tool. Oh, that's why I stopped. Mm -hmm. Let me quit and reopen. O OC uh, Auxiliary Tools sometimes does do this where you open uh, the path before opening OC and it won't see the drive. So I'll just see if it's going to work this time. Yeah, it's searching for that, that's why. Come on. Yeah, so these are the texts and extensions that I've got on this machine. Um, a lot of this was down to there was a couple, a couple of pre-built on GitHub, but I felt that they they just didn't hit, they didn't get everything working. So it would get certain things working and not others. Um, some of the biggest drawbacks that you will see with these builds is uh, that's why I want. There's a website that I often go to. Um, and in it it says to not share EFI uh, folders because what works on one machine might not work on another depending on the hardware differences um, I mean if it's a generic machine where they're all the same then it will um, that's why you know open call legacy patcher works on so many Macs because they know what the hardware is there's only slight variance um, and in in speaking about open call legacy patcher some more stuff that I've learned lately is about disabling SIP. Um, I did a build on the other machine to get the NVIDIA drivers working because my AMD card that I bought doesn't work on that machine and I was having issues and when I searched it a little bit more I found out the issues were because SIP wasn't um, disabled properly so to get post root install patches fully working um, now I've re-enabled SIP on this machine but then I didn't really need any patches anyway um, to get patches fully working you have to disable SIP to the correct level then open call legacy patches will work fully um, and there's a few other things with NVIDIA drivers where you uh, in your boot, args, boot arguments you have to write in here um, NVIDIA underscore equals online or whatever the argument is you have to write that in there so there's a couple of other steps um, you often find that you'll search search for it and a couple of your answers will be answered in one article and then it will be answered uh, somewhere else in another like the um, amphi get out of my way dash uh, equals one and then another few arguments about sip um, which I think that lowers SIP as well. This um, CS Active config that lowers SIP. Um, now the argument that I used to get HDMI working on this machine was minus CDF on. 
uh, that's what got the HDMI working and then there was a few extra arguments as well uh, to get the graphics fully working and then the, the system volume uh, the system just generally so if I go to my display um, you can see that uh, the reason I'm showing you the config is if you have this same machine and you, you, you're having issues um, this is likely where you'll find some answers uh, I know it helps me to look at other people's content on how they uh, solve certain issues and just watching Hackintosh videos in general does help a lot um, and then other tools like hacking tool hacking tool is really good but you have to be careful with it because it can do some pretty silly stuff at times like uh, if you go to patch and you manage to find a patch for a system uh, let's pick Haswell and then the platform ID so these are the supported platform IDs um, it will give you a frame buffer for that machine um, and then you can go into patch and let's just go generate patch and you think oh okay that's my patch for my system well it isn't it isn't there are parts in that patch that will work but not all of them so if you just insert this into your device properties it might be that your machine doesn't require for example I'm not saying it does doesn't require a GFX so that will then break the system so you have to be very careful with with the hacking tool and really look at well what is it actually doing you know it's stealing some memory for graphics it's giving you some cursor memory and uh, what is the frame buffer what's that doing so this is where your research kind of goes uh, goes into it so it looks like I have an old version also oh, I might actually update this in fact I might do it now so I've already got open core downloaded I'll do that in a second yeah so that's all the boot, the boot, boot args that I've used for this um, and it's detected my display which is just a 1080p uh, display if I go to displays well actually it's 1080p 1080p by default it can go higher but when you go higher it, it doesn't seem to detect it as well it's a bit funny this this monitor because it's also a smart TV um, now I don't have a Wi-Fi card in this but all I would have to do is put a support card in and adjust the uh, config.p list uh, to get Wi-Fi working but it does have um, points for aerials so you can put aerials on on this machine so it, it's really a good little machine for Hackintosh and they sell really cheap on eBay um, so if I go to ebay.co.uk and just search for um, HP G4 you can buy them in different configurations so 80 pounds you know that's a base configuration that would would do it has USB-C which works um, 80 quid for that machine with 8 gig of RAM, 120 gig NVMe. That's your Hackintosh for 80 quid. Uh, a little HP 400, that'd be a good little machine to get. Um, 70 quid, even better. I like the look of that. You've got room for a graphics card in that one. Uh, you've got display port so you need a active adapter a display port active adapter for that one uh, and CD which who, who uses CD nowadays um, this would be a these are these are a little bit more expensive but I have looked at these machines because um, you can get these with inbuilt AMD cards and he's got the little USB um, extension on that. So yeah, and also with the G4, you can actually buy the uh, the HDMI port. So if you go HP G4, um, so if you want just HDMI, you can actually just buy the HDMI port for twenty quid, 
and it just clips straight onto the board. Um, I actually took mine from my G, my other model, and clipped it into this machine uh, because the they're interchangeable. You can clip them in and out. So yeah, just to let you know about that. But yeah, it was just a quick video today, just to sort of tell you a little bit more about the builds. Um, I will at some point do a full tutorial but I, I like to see your comments on what machines you find interesting um, and go through a full a full uh, tutorial video where I take a machine from being bought right the way through to being fully set up like this because the process can be quite long um, so I need to do it over a set number of days uh, because you can be pulling your hair out for hours and hours uh, so I kind of need to take some of that and cut it down but this is just a video to show you guys this build I noticed as well that on the channel uh, the EFI folder that I shared it didn't quite share proper properly I guess the provider Terabox that I shared it with um, I've took out some of the files thinking it's a, a virus so I need to figure out a way of how to share uh, folders I thought about github um, and I'm looking at a solution where I can just auto push to github uh, so that you guys can because github's a bit better for that type of stuff for code um, you know so I'm working on that but please bear with me if you contact me um, on my email address or go to the website and sign up or anything like that then I can contact you directly but yeah so thank you all and I'll see you all very soon